um, he's stepping in for, for, for Andrew Strauss as director of cricket in England at the moment. So he was the, he was the wicket keeper and he was the captain at the side. So the report was that if anyone was going to take over from Andy, it was, it was me. Um, I mean, it was such an, it was very nice to hear you know, words like that from someone who I had looked up to uh, and someone who had represented the country. And because of that, I was then selected um, for the national team. And this is when I was 16, just about to 10, 17. I just written my all levels. And um, I was on the flight to go to West Indies. Um, and exciting, scary, um, a lot of expectations, uh, just a mixture of feelings. And I, I went to West Indies and I didn't really, again, I didn't really, I didn't realize you know, the, the steps that I was taking. Um, well, I didn't think I was going to play on tour. I just thought, well, I'm just going to go for a bit of experience and exposure. Um, but before I knew it, um, Andy, were, Andy Flower was pushing for me to, you know, to play all the warm-up games. And from the warm-up games, um, he then, you know, he then called me to his room and said, "Are you are you ready to play when you if you're asked?" And I said, "Andy, I'm only 17." He says, "Yeah, but you're playing, you know, you're playing really well in the nets." The one time he had, he had asked all the other players to stand on the side and watch me bat, um, and, and and that was nice. Uh, and he started, you know, pointing out those um, you know those things to me, and. I said, well, if I'm asked to, um, I'll give it my best shot, as you would know. Um, and, and, and said, okay, so we, we, we had then come over here, because um, from West Indies, we didn't go back to Zimbabwe. We just came over to the UK. And we had played the first test match at Lords, um, which, I, which I didn't play. And we played a warm-up game against Yorkshire. And um, I said, are you, are you okay to bet number four? So I said, yeah, um, bet number four. He said, well, we're just trying to give you more time on the crease uh, so that you're ready for the second test match. And a gentleman called uh, Matthew Hoggart was boarding. He wasn't here and made the national team there. Uh, he was playing for Yorkshire, and he hit me on the hand. Uh, and, I, uh, well, my hand got bad, and I couldn't play, um, you know, I couldn't make my debut, because I was actually supposed to make my debut over here. Um, and I then made a big decision to go back to school because I'd only done my all levels and my mom was against that. Now, I've just skipped a lot of things because I mean, one hour is just a little, it's just a little bit of time. Um, um, I, I skipped the part that my dad passed away when I was, when I was 12 um, and mom had to be bought, you know, mom and dad and um, you know, run the business that dad was, um, used to have, which was the a salon. Um, now, because I was now getting money, mom did not want me to go back to school. She was saying, well, a person goes to school so that um, you know, they're able to then get a job, and then you get a job, and you get money, um, and then you can pay for this, that, and the other. So you're already getting money. What's the point of you going to school? That was him, that was her thought, um, which I disagreed. Um, and I said, uh, I thought I was still uh, a bit immature, and if there was going to be some peer pressure, because I'm always with the lads, uh, I don't think I'm old enough to, you know, uh, to fight that off. <coughs> so I think I need to go back to school, you know, to get a bit more mature. Um, and we had a big fight about it, uh, to an extent that um, I then had to, you know, get my, my, I used my money to buy the uniforms and books and, 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 and things. And um, I closed off, well, I tried to close off cricket for two years, you know, to finish my A-level, uh, which I couldn't do because they wanted me to carry on playing, or Zimbabwe cricket wanted me to carry on playing uh, whatever cricket they could arrange for me. So all the national B's, uh, B matches um, I was selected for. So I would only go to school on a Monday and then be away for the rest of the week and then come back again on the Monday. Um, and my choice of subjects for A-level was, well, 
initially was mathematics, um, accounts, and management of business. But I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it, um, you know, to have good marks because um, it's just three tough, you know, uh, tough subjects. So I was quite natural in art. So I picked, I, I decided to drop maths and picked art. So I did art, accounts, and management of business. And for two years, I was, for, for the first year, I was pretty much going to school for one, for one day a week. Um, and just trying to catch up all the other time and with tours and playing. And by the time I wrote my final exam, I was on tour again. I was called, to, called back to the national team, I went to Sri Lanka. And that's when I had the worst tour of my life. Um, I just played three games, had three zeros, faced four balls. And I thought, I'm, I mean, cricket, is, it's, 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 it's gone now. Let me just, you know, let me leave it. And as I was about to, as I was walking back to the changing room on the last innings and thinking, you know what, I get to the changing room, I'll give the manager my bag and I'll ask him for my ticket, I want to go back home. And one gentleman, um, now in, in Sri Lanka, it will struggle to get people who speak English. And, but one gentleman just from the side, you know, just on the side of the rails where we're going up, he said, um, um, it doesn't matter how many times you fall. What counts is the number of times you get up and fight again. Hallelujah. I just tried to look who it was, and I couldn't. I, and I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't pick him up. And um, and that changed my mind. I got back to the changing room. Just had to, you know, dust myself up, pick myself up again. Um, and you know, I was, you know, back up playing again. And I. Had to come back down to under 19 because I'm still I was still under 19, and there was an under 19 World Cup to New Zealand, uh, and I was to captain Zimbabwe under 19 team, um, and I went went to New Zealand. I played really well there and came back as the you know the, the player of the tournament um, in, in that tournament. Uh, I think only the, I'm, I'm the only Zimbabwean to have that. Uh, uh, oh, actually, the second I was the first African to have that. Um, that trophy. Uh, the second one is a guy from, from South Africa. Uh, we had it, I think, about four or five years ago. So, um, again, I was back up playing at my best. Um, and at the age of 18, uh, that same year, I went back to join the national team and I was asked to, you know, to be vice captain of the national team. I was the youngest player in the side but then asked to be a vice captain. Um, apparently, the player said, I, for some reason, I commanded respect. Um, and because I did not speak um, you know, against anyone behind their back, if I had a problem with someone, I would just you know, pick up the phone, go to their room, especially on tour, because that's where a lot of problems do, do okay. Pick up the phone, go to their room, you know, dust it up, and then you will never hear, I would never speak, you know, speak of it again. Uh, and I think because of that, I think I, I uh, the players, most of the players started respecting me in the side. Um, and obviously because of the fight that I would put on on the, on the field, uh, I would never back up, you know, back down to a fight now, I'm talking cricket terms. And two years later from then, I, w I became the youngest test captain in the history of the game. Uh, still hold that record um, at 21, and uh, became the first black, uh, the first black captain in Zimbabwe, um, which that can't be beaten. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I kept, I kept climbing, climbing up the ranks. Um, by the time I was 23, I was world number 27, um, and then we, a lot of problems started happening in cricket in Zimbabwe, where cricket and politics started crossing paths. Yeah. Now, my character is such that I just, uh, when I see something bad, I will not just let it go. I had to speak, I had to speak it. Now, I was captain, I was going for the board meetings. I was, um, you know, I could see some of my players were not being paid properly, uh, were not being paid well. Um, you know, all the, all the younger players that were breaking into the team were not being paid well. And 
being a captain, I've gone to every player and established a relationship with every player and I've known where they were coming from. And, 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 and some were coming from real you know, poor backgrounds. And I'm thinking, sometimes I ask this guy to, you know, to give me his best on the field. Now, if he gets injured, and why this is not getting paid properly, how do I feel about it? So I started fighting a cause for my players. Um, and this cause got me into serious, serious trouble. Um, firstly, I started getting, um, uh, I started getting some offers. I was offered uh, farms twice, uh, just to keep quiet. Um, I was offered a house. My wife was offered a car from, of her choice from anywhere in the world, which we didn't take any. I kept saying, I'm, I'm coming here, to, not for me, I'm coming here for my players. I'm content with what I'm getting, I'm happy with what I'm getting. I was also offered uh, double my salary and double, because we used to get paid um, our salaries and match fees. Um, so that, that was separate. Now I was offered double my salary and then double my match fees. Our match fees used to come in US dollars and our, our, um, our salaries used to come in Zimbabwe dollars. And I was offered to be paid um, in, um, in, in US dollars for both and then double both, which I turned down. Now, this is before I knew Christ. I just, it was just conscience. Um, and, 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 and I remember when, when Loveness was, was, was offered a car of a choice from anywhere in the world, we, uh, we went back home and I was thinking, we actually then we thought about it and we thought, well, you know, why can't we? But something wouldn't let us. Um, and we, we turned it down. And then when I turned the final offer down, it got worse. Um, I was then uh, called by a certain minister and he asked to have a, meet, uh, you know, a meeting with me. And we chatted, uh, and I could tell, um, you know, where he was going, and I could tell that he was against what I was standing up for. And, um, but I wouldn't just let him speak. I just had to tell him what I felt, and even though I knew it wasn't going to go anywhere. And um, he was he was going to, to to travel with the president that night, so he said, "Oh, can we just pop outside?" Um, because I want to get my uh, passport photo, um, blah, 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 blah. And um, as we got out, we met uh, the, sec the, the second offer for the farm. Um, we got down and we met this lady um, just by the stairs. And she say, uh, he said, do you, do you know Tatenda? Uh, she said, yeah, I've heard the name, but I, I didn't know you were that short. Um, so <laughs> we, we chatted a while. And then he said, so where is Tatenda's, um, oh, he said, comrade, wherever, where is Tatenda's farm? And I said, um, ma'am, sir, I'm, I'm really sorry, but um, I don't want no farm. Um, I just want to play cricket. I want to earn my money playing cricket. Um, if you can sort out cricket for me, I'm happy. Uh, he says, don't be silly, young man. Um, you know, you can just get workers at your farm and you just enjoy the money. I said, again, sir, I'm really sorry, but I, I, I'm, I, I would rather you sort out cricket and I'll earn my money playing cricket. And then so we went, he got the, pass, the, 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 the passport picture, and we came back. And he got into his drawer, put an envelope, and he threw it on the desk. Now I was thinking, I've watched this on TV. Um, does this actually happen in real life? You know? And I'm thinking, what is in there? And um, so, and then he went, stood by the window, and he's looking outside. So I took the envelope, and it was pictures pictures of dead people. And so I flipped a few and some of them were quite horrible. So I, I, I pretended like I was having a look, but I wasn't, I was just, you know, flipping through. And then I finished and I'm thinking now, um, okay, what is this all about? Um, you, know, is the, you know, what's the message that I'm supposed to catch here? So I put the photos back in the envelope and I, you know, gave him back and I said, I had, a, I had another meeting. So I said, I'm, I, um, well, I'm going for another meeting. Um, so you know, we'll catch up again some other time. So I left. Now I'm a little bit you know, shocked. 
um, you know, head this. And uh, at that time, I'd gotten married, um, you know, been blessed with a, a first, uh, first son, and he was 10 days old. And Lovelace got a call, and the guy on the other side just said, um, your boy is 10 days old, look after him well. And then he cut the phone. And then, um, and when I got back home, she told me that, and just as we were talking about that, I got a call. And, uh, you know, I said, well, I asked who it was, and then he wouldn't say, and then he just said, uh, uh, be very careful, young man. And then he cut the phone. And then the, the landline, because this was our cell phones, and then the landline um, also rang. And it was just the same messages. And that, that was the last one on that day. And then the following day, it happened the same way. Um, and then we thought, you know what? Let's leave the house. Mm. Yeah, something, is, you know, something is not right. So I called my lawyer and we left the house. Uh, we went to stay in a hotel, um, and um, I, I thought, you know, Lovelace, I need to, let's leave the country. You know, this is getting a bit dangerous, uh, because I wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't going to pull back on, on that fight. So I said, it's better I just leave, um, go to another country, and just, you know, call it quits. And just before, you know, before I finalized my my contract for Bangladesh because that was you know where I decided to go um, a certain gentleman called me and he said um, the vice president because there are two vi uh, vice presidents the, one was Musika and the other one was um, Dr. Mju and um, she said uh, she, oh, he said she wants to meet you so I said well I will I'll go see her so we went there and um, she asked me, well, because I had put, I'd, I'd also done a, a press release to say that I'm, you know, I'm retiring, um, you know, cricket and, 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 and politics, sport and politics should never mix, so I'm, I'm leaving. And so she was asking me why I was leaving, you know, because, uh, because of what I had achieved, especially in the black community, cricket had started to become popular. Where, where football was played in the streets, it was now cricket being played in the streets. And now me leaving the sport was, you know, going to be a big dent. That's how she put it across. Yeah. And um, and I said I can't I can't stay because this is what's happening. So I explained about the phone calls. I explained about what uh, the mismanagement of funds and my, you know my players not being paid properly and yeah. And she was going for a funeral, so she asked for the governor. Um, to take over from them. She, she called She called the governor, she summoned him to see me. And I went to see the governor, uh, Dr. Gono, and um, he, uh, he took over and, uh, you know, he, he tried to understand, obviously, because, you know, it's, 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 it's sport, so it's away from their, from their field. I did explain to, me, to him what I thought, and um, he, he then gave me a list of names and numbers of all the CIOs that were around the area that, you know, my house. And he then all arranged for, um, for, for security for my house. And, and he said, you know, don't be in such a rush to, to go to Bangladesh. So I said, okay. And we were there for two weeks. Then he called me back again and he showed me a file about this thick of all their findings because I'd say to him, because he had said to me, how come you have, you speak with so much confidence, but you don't have, a, you know, a single proof of what you're saying. Then I said, but you've got a team of investigators that can actually investigate and tell me more than what I can actually give you. So why don't you do that? So, so he did, and he gave me a file this thick, and he just flipped through the pages saying, oh, yeah, you know, Zimbabwe Cricket is doing this, that's illegal, that, that's illegal. But then he closed the file. And the way, I remember the way he started speaking after that got me a bit worried because he was, the first, the first meeting, he was very dignified. But this time around, I was like a young brother, you know. Um, and I thought, something is wrong here. 
um, and 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 he, he always called me, um, you know, my biggest icon. Um, so he said, oh, my biggest icon. You know, you mustn't go. You. So I thought I said, but why are they still? Why are they still running? You know, why are they not? Why are they not in jail? Um, if they're doing all these things illegally, why are they not in jail? Um, now I was pointing at the chairman and the MD. And uh, he said, yeah, they were, because um, they got into jail for two days. I said, but they are out. He says, yeah, it's a long story. He never really said anything. Um, and he said, but you should go back and play. I said, ah, okay, I will do. Um, I actually lied because I had made up my mind that I was going. And I, I left the office. Um, and they, at that time, it was not, you know, we're not allowed to, to open um, offshore accounts. So I had one. And I thought, mm, you know what? Let me just close it off. So I did close it off. Um, and you know, there was a bit of a hunt on people that had offshore accounts. Uh, and well, because I'd closed one, my, my, mine off, there was nothing that you know, I couldn't be touched. But then some of the guys that were close to me on the, you know, on the field got, um, got caught. Now I called him uh, because he gave me one phone uh, one phone number when he, which he said on this one I will answer regardless, and then he didn't answer uh, for about a couple of hours, and for me again that was not a good sign. So I decided to carry on. I went to Bangladesh, um, and then after Bangladesh, we decided not to go back to Zimbabwe. Uh, we went to we came over here for seven months, then we went to Namibia, um, and then. You know, back into the national team. Well, one of the, 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 the you know the, the administration had changed, the board had changed as well. Um, so the main uh, the main men for um, our main sponsor uh, came to Namibia to see me and asked me to come back, and I, I agreed. And now I I did a deal. I didn't allow them to give me a contract and just sign. But I, uh, I said I would do my own contract, so they allowed me to do, and I did it in such a way that I was no, almost not attached to Zimbabwe cricket, um, and it was just you know playing and then going back home playing, and and I, um, and I played my best during that that period, um, and then that's the time I made the IPL, uh, which is a very probably the biggest league. In, um, in cricket at the moment, um, and it it was now during that time that the Lord started knocking on my on my heart. Now everything was going well. I mean, uh, I, had a, I had a three year contract, huge money. Um, I just bought my second house, happily married. Um, you know, just been blessed with the. No, expecting, we're expecting our second son. And I just broken, I just had another record as the, the first Zimbabwe to score 100 against South Africa. And so I was sitting in my lounge and, you know, just where it was, you know, the glass, the glass door. And so where the sunshine used to come in. And, and my wife was reading different newspaper articles I am, um, you know, just, could, well, she was reading. I never used to read newspaper articles, you know, good or bad. I never did. Uh, I always used to think, if it's a good article, I don't want to get big-headed. If it's a bad article, I don't want to be, you know, demoralized. So I just never used to read. Um, so she would read and collect the cuttings. And I still have the cuttings. And probably read the following year or two years later when it has no effect. So she was reading and, and she was saying, saying, oh, that's a good article. Oh, this one, oh, that's a nice article, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, loveness, what then? And she stopped reading. She looked at me. She said, what? I said, what then? She says, what do you mean? I said, if the next game comes, and it will come, if I play well, we're going to be sitting here again and you're going to be taking newspaper articles. Um, or if I play, play badly, 
you won't buy the newspaper article um, and you won't be making any cuttings. I said, what then? He said, I don't think I really understand what you're trying to say today. I said, uh, I said, okay, let me try and stretch your mind a bit. I said, the next game is going to come and we're going to play and I'm going to play. I'm going to prepare for it well uh, or, you know, to the best of my ability and I'm going to play and then I'm going to come back again and then the next game is going to come and that is going to continue and go on and on and on like that up until I retire. And then I said, but still, what then? And she said, Tadenda, where are you going with this? I said, okay, let me carry on. I said, one day I'm going to grow old and the name is, too, is soon going to be forgotten. The trophies are all going to be thrown away. What then? And then uh, she said, uh, um, I, I, well, I don't think I'll have an answer to what you're asking me, Tadenda. Um, and I said, well, let's stretch a bit further. One time we're going to have to leave this earth. And what then? Um, and then there was silence. And I said, but I think I'll find my answer in the Bible. I didn't read the Bible then, but that's all I said. I just said, I think I'm going to find my answer in the Bible. There was a, I used, I used to have, I used to own a Bible, but just used to own it, but not read it. Um, and I thought that was just going to go away, but it didn't. It got heavy on me each day. Um, and the more I tried to block that away, the more it would come knocking. And um, I started, then I started reading the Bible, but I could not understand it. I thought, there have got to be someone who will be able to explain this that I'm reading that I can't understand. Um, maybe that's why the churches are there. So I started searching for, you know, for a church to, to go to. <clears throat> so I went from church to church. Um, uh, and for about two years. By this time, um, I was getting better. As in, the, the, you know, the, the knock on my heart was getting better. But I knew I had not found the answer yet. And uh, because I kept saying, uh, I, would, I would say to Loveness, I said, you know, the beds, because where I used to sit, um, there, was, there were trees, you could see trees outside. It was quite a big yard, so there would be trees outside. And then we would, would, would love, we used to love watching the beds. You know, and, and would, I would say, sometimes when we wake up early in the morning, five o'clock, the birds are singing, and they're happy all the time. And I said, we're the highest species, but how come we wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Mm. But the birds are happy all the time. How come if we're the highest species, there's something wrong somewhere? Uh, there shouldn't be a wrong side of the bed. How come we get angry? The birds don't. If you, if you, I had, I had seven dogs then, and I said, if sometimes maybe, you know, I will leave the house and you know not even pay attention to the dogs, and but when I come back, they just they're all running at you. I said, but we but we humans we're not like that. I said, and, but we're the highest species, so there's something wrong somewhere. And I said, but I, I, I'm convinced I'm going to find the answer in the Bible. I'm convinced that's where the answer is going to lie because I was I was quite short tempered, um, and and. If if though if, if was if something went wrong on the field, I mean, and and you know someone would let the team down, I would make sure that I would tell him in the changing room. Um, I played with um, with Joe here, and he's never seen me angry. Um, Harry has seen me several times; he's never seen me angry. My brother, you've seen me many times; he's never seen me angry. I don't remember the last time I actually got angry after I was saved. I'll, I'll come to that. I'll, there's a story to that. Now, so I was, I kept questioning that, that as, as the highest species, surely we should be happy people all the time. And, um, and so I kept a, an eye, well, I kept a feeling on my temper. That's what, that was the tag for me. So there are other, 
you know, other little things that I did, um, you know, along the way. And one of the one of the times uh, during that period, before before I accepted Christ, I was reading uh, just before you know I went to bed, and I said to Loveness, um, I want to tell you something. I said, but I won't tell you today. I will tell you tomorrow. Um, and she, you know, she tried to ask me to convince me to speak, but I and I wouldn't. I said, I'm going to tell you tomorrow. So we woke up in the morning, and I said, um, Loveness, I've got. I need you to sit here. I said, look, you know the Lord has been calling me um, and, uh, and I think I've, uh, I feel it upon my heart that I should do this. Um, and she says, oh, okay, go on. I said, I want to give you my life story. She says, Tatenda, but I know you. I said, no, no, you don't. I said, you know part, I said, you know part of my life. You don't know my whole life. I said, um, you know, when we met and, you know, I would you know, to tell you stories about what used to happen uh, growing up. I said, a lot of the stories, I used to twist them to come out, you know, good. <laughs> but today, it's not going to be like that. Today is going to be the real Tatenda. So I opened my book, um, my life story, from the, from the time I remember, and I told her everything, whatever I twisted, all the wrong that I'd done here, whatever else, I just opened the book to her. And I said, um, um, I know there are a lot of things that I would have said that, um, you know, that would hurt you. I'm really sorry, and you know my heart. Um, you know, I wouldn't do that to hurt you. Uh, but I can't, I, I, I did not feel like I could go on without doing that. Um, so I said, I just need to go and, you know, close myself somewhere to pray. Um, you know, and until I feel that the Lord has forgiven me. Um, and that, that was one. Um, and the time I accepted Christ, I was reading a, a, a spoken word. It's, a, it's a, 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 a preaching that was typed. So I was reading it. And it was about pride. And while I was reading it, uh, it was talking about this, the, you know, the, the lady that went with perfume to Jesus Christ. And and I just, I broke down. And I thought, how many times do we just puff up and think that we are somebody? You know, when, when we really know nothing, just, you know, uh, you know a, piece of, a piece of flesh with chemicals, that's not, that won't even be worth a pound. So, um, and that's the time I accepted Christ um, as my personal savior. And I remember going to, uh, it was, I was in South Africa, we're actually on tour in South Africa. And I went to all my team members, uh, I went to the coaching staff first. At that time, I had a little bit of a, t a tension with the coach, and I just knocked on his door. I said, um, uh, he says, Tell me, is everything all right? Because I've been crying. And he said, um, uh, then I said to him, I really want to say sorry for everything that I've done that's wrong. Um, I said, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a Christian. Um, and uh, then he says, ah, you know, Tatenda, it's not all your fault. I've done things that are wrong also. I said, no, no. I said, you're not getting it. I said, if you take a cup and you knock it off like this, um, it doesn't retaliate. You know, it just gets knocked off and it just pushes back and then it's, you know, it stays or if it goes down, it breaks, but it does not retaliate. I said, if you did something to me and I retaliated, it means that I'm not right. There is something that you've pushed and it has responded. So I said, that thing is what I don't want. So I said, I'm really sorry about that. Um, and uh, then I say, it takes a real man, you know, to come and do what you've done, what you've just done. I said, I'm, I'm, thank I'm thankful. And I went to the other coaching staff and I got the team together. And I said, look, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that you will not, um, that's, you know, that's the end of it. I don't know. I hope it is. Um, but one thing you are guaranteed is if I do something again, I will come back again and I will apologize again until uh, the Lord, by his grace, takes it all, of, you know, all away. Uh, and I said, I don't know when he will do it. I don't know if he will do it, but I just believe it. Um, 
and um, they, you know, they started calling me Moses from then on. <laughs> um, and and now on the temper, how the last time that I remember when I uh, I feel that that's when the temper was totally taken away um, was Lovness has started also following Christ, and so we were now both, you know, making strides. Um, and um, something happened. I don't remember what happened. And she she said something, and I didn't like. And I remember building up, you know. And I thought, no man, it's, 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 it hasn't gone as yet. So I went into my study, closed the door, and I knelt down, started praying. I said, Lord, I don't want this. Um, and she, she came in the room, and she, she respected that I was praying, so she went back out. And then when I finished, I got up, started reading the Bible, and she came in, she said, we're not finished. I said, I, you know, I, I thought this was done. I said, oh, no, we're not finished, we're not done yet. I said, um, okay. She started speaking, I didn't answer. And then now, that was remarkable because I would speak before I would just speak. And then she thought, what? Tatinda hasn't responded. And she went to the, she went, I don't think she would like me telling this, <laughs> but she, she went to the refrigerator, she took a glass of water and um, she came in and she poured that water on my back. And I remember I kept bawling and I, I was thinking, I thought, I, I, kept thinking, it's not right, I shouldn't be feeling like this. So, but I kept quiet, I said, I'm not going to respond, I'm just going to stay calm. And she, now, well, she then says, she tells me, I mean, it was, it was remarkable for her, because she was thinking, Tatenda, the Tatenda I know wouldn't react like this. So she went to get a, uh, some yogurt. <laughs> And she poured that yogurt on my head. <laughs> I think that was the final push. And um, um, then when she did that, I knelt down and I started praying. I said, Lord, it's, I should not be feeling like this. So I started praying. And she respected that uh, again. And she, you know, she left the room. And that's the last time I remember because... The other test that I got after that was my managing director just before I then retired. He used to always, we used to have a go at each other. I mean, we, I don't remember a time when we actually finished a meeting when he started having a go. I would also have a go and then just, you know, leave. And he, he started shouting at me and I did not feel the same way that I felt before. And uh, he went on for, ten, for about five to ten minutes, and I didn't respond. And then he, he kept quiet. And he said, um, so what are you going to do? Which was a question which was out of context. I said, well, all I know is that a, a lot of what you've said are lies. Um, and the Bible says that, uh, you know, let every man's word be a lie and mine be the truth. And I just thought, did I just say that? And, um, and then, I, then I got up, I said, well, and then again, um, if, you, if, if the money, because I was, I was following up the money, I said, if, if that money is not there, it's okay. Uh, please pass my regards to your family and the two boys, how are they? And I thought, no, that didn't just happen. When I went back home, I was happy and I was, you know, I told Lovness and, um, you know, we had, you know, rejoicing and we knelt down we prayed i mean it was um it was a better feeling than you know all the hundreds that i'd scored before and um um and then during that time because i was so focused on wanting christ in my life cricket became a distraction um I mean, because everything that I was thinking, I was thinking Christ first, Christ first, Christ first. Um, and a lot of the things that were, you know, that happens in sport, um, you know, where I, I was not really feeling comfortable, you know. And the, a lot of the things, especially say, uh, you know, take the IPL, for example, you're almost worshipped. 
um, if, if, if anyone knows, you know, about the IPL. I mean, I could, I can't walk up to date. I've, I've ret I retired six years ago. I was in India about a month and a half ago. I could not walk around the streets like I do here. That's how, that's how cricket is like in India. Mm. I mean, I had to have guards with me. So, I, and I remember walking in my room and there was a glass just on the side and I felt I, you know, I had my chest out like this and I thought, that's not me. So things like that mm. kept, you know, kept putting me on check <clears throat> to say, you know, this, this is not really where you should be. Um, and, and so I, I decided I had to pick one. It had to be, you know, following Christ or cricket. Um, and that's when I made the decision and, you know, to retire. And that decision could not be understood. It was not to say, I'm, it was not to say I'm now leaving cricket. It was never understood up to date. It was not to say I'm leaving cricket because uh, I'm now working for the Lord somewhere. It was not that. It was that I was so focused on, uh, on following Christ that anything else became a distraction. Even cricket became a distraction. And now, because cricket was my occupation and that's what people knew me for, yeah. could not comprehend. They could not make sense out of that. Uh, so the, a rumor then emulated to say that Tatela is now becoming a preacher, mm. which is not true. Um, I think that's actually what's even on the Wikipedia, if I'm not mistaken. But it's not true. I was just following Christ and that's all. And cricket had become a distraction and I wanted to put it to a stop. Mm. Um, so in that journey, um, I started going to a church in Bulawayo. So we used to drive 400 miles, 400 kilometers, no, 400 miles to church. And then, so we used to wake up at three, start driving, start driving at about 4.30, get to church at about um, nine, and then listen to a sermon for about six hours and then drive back. So we did, I did that for about a year and a half. And, um, and, and, and I did not... I didn't realize such as, you know, I didn't see it as a sacrifice. Mm. Uh, it's only people, and, and now when I look back and I think, how did I do that? You know, every Sunday, waking up at three, you know, and, and the family was supportive. Um, loveness was 100%, you know, in support with it. The boys never complained one, you know, one bit. And, um, and certain yeah. spiritual things started happening. Um, and it was not what we were looking for. It was not what we were searching for. What, what I simply wanted was to follow Christ and that's it. And it started when we were at home and we're just having our, you know, our prayers in the morning. We have our prayers in the morning and evening, um, every day as a family. And, um, we were talking about, uh, I started talking about something and I just remember that something took over me. Um, in in my explanation, I wouldn't. I don't remember what I was, uh, what I actually said. But my wife started speaking in tongues. Mm. Now um, she had never spoken in tongues, and you know we just read that in the in the Bible. And she started speaking in tongues, and now <coughs> I didn't know what to do. So all I did was I just um, I just bowed down, and I started praying silently, and. Um, and the boys, uh, the boys were there, um, and one we're staying with one of our, my, one of my nephews, and he started crying, um, and we all got quiet, and then loveness continued, you know, just repetition and, and, and going on, and up until she finished, and then she was also crying, and that was the first, that was the first time, and then the same thing happened in church. Uh, where uh, it was during a song service and then she started speaking in tongues. Um, and all that I know, I've never spoken. I've never spoken in tongues. Uh, all I've, never, I've ever known about speaking in tongues is what I read in the Bible. Um, and during that time, I, was, I started having a burden about 
you know, following what the disciples had done um, and the way they lived. And I saw, I got so caught up in, 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 in reading the four Gospels and the book of Acts. And the song leader, uh, the song leader at the church uh, that I was going to in Blawayo had an accident. He borrowed my car to go to Arare. So I bought another place in Blawayo. So just to, you know, be closer to where the church was. And he had an accident. And I just thought, well, he is in Harare. He doesn't know about Harare because he grew up all, you know, all his life in Blawayo. I said, I think I better go up there and help him out because, you know, Harare can be fast. You know, it's like London and Liverpool. Mm. And, uh, and I thought, well, I just help him in prayer. Um, so he had broken hands because uh, it was head, head on collusion. So he had broken hands and broken leg. And the guy on the passenger seat we had um, broken femur. And they were both, it was both, crit it was critical for both of them. And they were saying for, for the song leader, uh, his name is Sam, they were saying he had a swollen heart. And they say you can't, you know, you can't inject or you can't inject the heart or something along those lines. So you just have to wait and see if it actually just, you know, uh, goes down. And then the other one, they were saying that if the blood and the bone marrow mix um, and then it goes to the heart, it can be dangerous. So we had to look for money for them, um, and we. But then I just said I would I'll be there for them and pray with them. So I started praying with them in the morning. I'll just go there in the morning, and I didn't go back because it was a one hour drive. So I didn't go back. I'll just stay at the hotel. I mean at the at the hospital, up until the evening visit and pray with them and then go back. So I did that for for six weeks, and he was supposed to be in there for uh, for six months. They had said. Um, and one of the one of the nights, I was praying, um, I was praying for him. And then, now this is his testimony. He says he felt, um, you know, he felt he felt ease, uh, you know, on his heart. Now, because all his hands were in on strings, um, you know. So I said to the guy I was with, I said, when we come back tomorrow, he's going to be moving his hand because he couldn't move his hand. He was in ICU. And um, when we came back the following morning, and I'd forgotten about what I had said, um, so the guy went in to see him first because it was only two people allowed. And thank you. Um, it was only two people allowed at a time. And he, he, he went in and he never saw him, or he just saw him, and then he came out running. And he said, Talenda, he's waving his hand, he's waving his hand. So, I mean, we started praising the Lord. And... Um, So he started praising, we both started praising the Lord, and, um, and he just started recovering uh, quicker. He could move both hands, um, and, you know, he was out, um, you know, in, in, in six weeks' time. And then the other, the other gentleman, so I took him back to Blawayo, then came back again for the other gentleman, and, um, you know, prayed with him, continued with him up until he was out because after they just did the op, the, you know, the op for him, um, you know, he, you know, he was out of danger. And um, so, so that started happening. Um, and there was another guy called Elijah, and Elijah was also in the ICU, and they, you know, he had been given up by the doctors, and they'd say that he had to go back out. But, um, you know, he was not going to be able to sit again to eat properly. He was going to be eating off a straw. And he was going to be, and he was not going to talk again because they said half of his brain was damaged or something because he got beaten um, while he was drinking with his, with, you know, some other people. And, um, and when and the, the, his family members asked me to pray for him, so I did. Um, and, and the last communication I had with them was when he was walking again, uh, when he was eating, he could now speak two words, um, uh, kumba and mvura, which is water and warm uh, in our local language. Um, you know, and so those things started following, but um, I think that uh, 
that is my calling. Um, it's not something that I looked for, uh, but the, the best thing that ever happened to me was receiving Christ. I mean, sports, sports people um, that I've met everywhere, um, you know, <clears throat> around the world, whether be it cricket or any other sport, they, they, always, they always admit that there is a void. They always admit. And for me, I believe that that void is Christ. Uh, yes. I mean, a person can have a lot of money. That can never, uh, that can never suffice a human being. Um, you know, that's why people would like, love to monopolize and have more money. You know, because that's 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 not the satisfying portion. Amen. You can have a person can have houses, can have all the fame that they want. I mean, um, it doesn't <laughs> to an extent. It actually doesn't make sense. People, you know, want to be famous, and then when they're famous, they spend the rest of their life trying to hide away. Um, you know, so it's a bit of a confusion actually. So I think um, um, it's it's a. I've really, from then on, I really know the purpose of life, um, and that, you know, to be to be popular or to have a lot of money, will never will never satisfy. The only when I've scored hundreds or broken records or whatever, or things that are deemed to be great, the satisfaction that has given me can only last two days at most. Mm -hmm. I can tell can, by experience. Two days at most, mostly it's just one day. Um, and then, you know, the following day and that's it. But just me talking about when I helped in prayer, because I'm not the one that would have healed him, when I helped this guy in prayer up until you got well, it is, it is constant satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Just not only that, just even just helping, up, uplifting someone else. I mean, um, I sometimes I'm asked to, you know, to do, uh, Harry would know this and Joe would know this, you know, sometimes I'm asked to, to do a bit of coaching uh, to help someone. And I almost feel bad when you know, I know they will not say, you know, if I say, okay, I can do it for free, they will not because they're like, you know, you're giving your time. But when I hear that that person has now done well, um, mm. that satisfaction is better to me. Amen. It's better than me scoring 100. Amen. When you can uplift, when you can make life a little easier for someone else. Amen. I mean, that, I mean, it's, the, the world is full of pressure. It's, it's yeah. difficult as it is. I mean, so if you can help someone else for life, to be a bit better, why at least we are only passing by, I think um, that goes a long way. Mm. Um, so on that, I think time has been jealous again. Mm. Um, we'll have to, to end there. Um, I mean, I always believe that from speaker to speaker, um, I mean, there's a certain audience that's, you know, that's touched in a different way because our lives are all different. Yeah. Some feel moved by someone who um, who used to to be in the war, like um, the gentleman that's going to speak next time, um, and someone who's been in jail, or you know, a gangster, or you know, a prostitute, or someone like that. But you know, there's also someone who may be touched in a different avenue, Absolutely. and with a life, the lifestyle that's almost similar to mine. So um, uh, I would like to invite anyone that would have felt that um, the Lord was speaking to him. I mean, I'm, I'm just, uh, I believe the Lord wanted what was spoken to be spoken. That's why I didn't bring anything written. I just said, oh, you know, the Lord have your will. Uh, whatever you want to be spoken must be spoken. So um, if we could bow down our eyes. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, creator of heavens and earth, give our favor of good and precious gift. We come before thy presence this evening. We are ever so grateful and thankful that you have given us this time. You knew before the foundation of the world that we will be gathered in such a manner. And Lord, we may have planned how this night would have gone, but Lord, you always have the final say. And what was spoken, Father, is what you wanted to be spoken. 
And Father, if there is anyone, Lord, that you were aiming these words at, Lord, may, and I know that you've taken these broken words, this broken, uh, pierced uh, speech, Father, and Lord, I know that you rearrange it in a way that is touching to someone. And Father, and I pray if you are dealing with someone, uh, and I know you're always dealing with someone, Father, I pray that may this be the night that they will look at and say from that, from that time on, I was, never the, I was never the same again. Amen. I pray, Father, and just mm. commit this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.